Religious liberty and schools. Where's the line? And what's protected? I'm not trying to incite uh, these kids to go back and be a rebellious youth. Uh, I just talked to a student earlier who said that his teacher told him to put the Bible away. He wasn't allowed to have it, even to carry it around in school. A community there rooting for a high school cheerleading squad in what's turned into a battle over religion and football. The squad has been banned from showing banners of Bible verses during games. Now they're headed to court. And I, I told him, I said, you still respect and obey your teacher. However, you, legally you are allowed to carry your Bible around in school. It's okay. Welcome to Family Matters. I'm your host, Andrew Beckwith, president of Massachusetts Family Institute. Can your child take their Bible to their public school? Can they start a Bible club in their public school to share their faith with other students? You might be surprised to learn what the answers are. And that's why I've invited someone to share their personal story of how they started a Bible club in their public school here in Massachusetts. Please welcome Chloe Stubblebein. Thanks so much for having me, Mr. Beckwith. We're so happy to have you on the show. Could you kind of set the table for us? Uh, you tried to start a Bible club in your public high school, is that right? Yes, we did. My sisters and I started a Bible study this year at our public high school. It is very anti-Christianity and anti-God there, so it was um, difficult at times, and we did face some opposition, but we're very thankful for organizations like Massachusetts Family Institute to help support us through that. So you face kind of a hostile climate uh, culturally in your high school. Tell, tell everyone about the, uh, I think it was a ministry fair, not, well, not a ministry fair, it would have been a club fair, club fair yes. at your school, and you had a lot of students interested, right? But you faced some pushback even at that point? Yes, we had, um, just to start with in the beginning, we, it was really difficult to find a teacher willing to supervise our club. There were multiple Christian teachers at the school, but all of them were very fearful of losing their jobs um, and just facing persecution from other teachers as well. So none of them really were willing to do that. And thankfully, um, after some prayer, we did find one teacher willing to help us and advise our club. Um, and then after that, during the club fair with the other students, we did have a lot of students just like literally like mocking us and laughing at us and pointing at us and like whispering at us from the club fair, which is like crazy because like I know that if any other of the students did that to any of the other clubs that were there, um, some of which were are the complete opposite of uh, our Bible study <laughs> topics. Um, that wouldn't be tolerated, would it? It would not be tolerated. And that's one of the things that people need to understand is that you can have Bible clubs, religiously based clubs and student activities, even in public schools. Um, they have to be treated the same as all the other clubs. Mm -hmm. Now, you, they have to be student run, right? So you can't have a teacher who is running the club um, because that would then potentially be a conflict between you know, a state endorsement of religion, right. uh, which is prohibited by the First Amendment, but the First Amendment protects your right as a student to freely express your religion and your faith. And you don't sacrifice those First Amendment rights just because you walk through the doors of the public school. And like all other clubs, you need to have a, a uh, faculty sponsor or supervisor who again is not running the club, they're not leading the Bible study, but they make sure that you know you have a classroom you can meet in, kind of administrative uh, access to emails, to put out announcements, and you know, make sure no one's uh, doing anything inappropriate in the classroom setting. But but it's student led, and that's fine. That's protected by the First Amendment. But as you discovered, there's a lot of teachers and administrators who don't know that. You may hear the argument that Vanderbilt is discriminating against religious groups. I want to assure you that in my opinion, we are not. The administration calls it an all-comers policy, as in student groups must accept all comers. This policy is not an attempt to single out particular student groups. Its purpose is to promote equal opportunity for all. And under this policy, Christian groups could no longer require members or leaders to affirm a belief in Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior nor could they ask Christian leaders to lead Bible study or worship or lead a Christian lifestyle. And at that point, it's no longer a Christian group. You know, maybe it's a social group. I'm not sure what it becomes.
A lot of the teachers are very much in opposition to this even now since we've started it. Um, for an example, we meet in an English room in the English department and every single Wednesday or most Wednesdays the English teachers um, have a English meeting, that mandatory meeting that they have and they intentionally pick our room and they always like kick us out early even though all the other classrooms are all available to meet in. Schools are required to treat Christian clubs in the same manner they would treat non-religious clubs, meaning these clubs will receive equal access to resources, facilities, and equipment. So that's just one example, but also um, before we started the club, the principal wanted to, almost required us to meet with him and to go over what we could and couldn't say. I remember there was some email correspondence about that. I think they wanted to review the curriculum you'd be using for the Bible club, which again has the whole legal premise backwards because the, the prohibition on uh, church and state sort of involvement in that context is that you don't want the state, which is the school uh, in this example, dictating what's being taught. So for them to, re to have to review your curriculum, I mean, that, when I saw that you know, email chain, uh, definitely raised some red flags. And so I think you're, it, there was a response back that just said, um, you know, here, the curriculum is the Bible. And so are you going, how are you going to evaluate that? And have you requested and evaluated the curricula for all the other groups? And so once we asked those questions, uh, they didn't answer those questions. They just basically caved at that point, right? Right, yeah. And also, we hosted a um, Patriots football player for an event at our school where we got like over 50 kids come. And it was really, it was an amazing experience. Like um, he shared straight up evangelism <laughs> um, and beforehand um, our teacher said she was like feeling really nervous which is understandable because of all the other um, persecution that she faces as well and this, she, is your, this is your sponsor yeah our sponsor has also <laughs> so you did you did find ultimately a teacher who was willing to be the sponsor for the club yes and our sponsor said to me um, she had a meeting with me and she basically said that um, like, we weren't allowed to pray or anything because it was like it would um, or s like do any sort of like worship or sing any s types of worship songs or like get like really in depth because it would um, enforce or it would make people feel uncomfortable and force something on people because she knows that people are going to be coming that aren't Christians. As long as it does not interrupt school activities, students may lead a group prayer time whenever and wherever they please. Just remember, it must be voluntary and not make other students late for class. This is a voluntary club. Right. No one's forced to join this club. Yeah. So of course you can sing praise songs and pray. So it sounds like we'll have to do some more uh, educating of the educators on right. this issue. I just thought like, wow, that is such a double standard. Like, and I just asked her the question, like what happens when I'm in class, which happens all the time, and mm -hmm. the teacher says something that is that makes me feel uncomfortable and that I don't agree with, does that then make it like okay okay for the teacher to still say that or like what happens because that happens all the time. And you have to be in those classes. And I do have to be in those classes. Which makes so it it's different. a double yeah, standard. Is, absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. So how many students have been coming to these club meetings? On average we probably have around fifteen kids each time. Um, and then we had our big event which was like fifty kids. Wow. So, Wonderful. And yeah. how many of the students are sort of new to the faith or exploring the faith? A lot of them are very curious about Christianity and they're very much open to it. So they're not like strongly opposed or um, have, you know, have some awful agenda against us. And they're genuinely really interested. And it's just really cool to see them um, coming back each week. And it's like, their place where they can go because maybe their family doesn't actually go to church or like they're having like a rough family life and it's really cool to see how God is using um, this club that we started to impact some of the lives of the students at school. That sounds like a really positive development and again kudos to you for having the courage and tenacity to stick with it and see this thing through in the face of pretty hostile resistance from teachers and administrators again, who we're trying to educate so that they know what students' rights are. Well, that's all the time we have for today. 
If your son or daughter is interested in starting a Bible club in their public school and they live here in Massachusetts, we'd be more than happy to help them. Contact me at andrew at mafamily.org, andrew at mafamily.org, and we'll make sure that their constitutional rights are enforced so they can spread God's word, even in the public school. If you like this episode, please remember to hit subscribe, turn on notifications, and share with your friends and family, and be encouraged to stand for faith, family, and freedom. Thanks again for joining us, Chloe. Thank you. You're not alone out there. We've got your back.